government exists to serve the British people, and this Queen speech delivers on their priorities. And by strengthening our NHS with the biggest programme of hospital building for a generation, by putting 20,000 more police on the streets, by unlocking the potential of the whole country with new infrastructure, better education and high technology, from gigabit broadband to a new national space strategy, we aim to create a new age of opportunity for the whole country. As we prepare to get Brexit done by October the 31st, we are setting out now our vision of an open, global, free-trading United Kingdom, a high-wage, low-tax economy with the highest environmental standards, new protections for animal welfare, the best place to invest the best place to start a business, the best place to start a family and send your kids to school. And without being, without being chauvinistic or disrespectful to anywhere else in the world, in important respects, this country is the greatest place to live and to be. The greatest place, the greatest place on earth. Mr Speaker, Her Majesty's gracious speech was proposed superbly by my honourable friend, the member for North East Derbyshire. Uh, the first Conservative to represent his seat since 1935, when presumably the Honourable Member opposite departed for Bolsover. And if, <laughs> if, honourable, members, if honourable Members are wondering uh, whence uh, he, my Honourable Friend derives his passion and his oratorical gifts, it may interest them to know that his aunt was secretary to Arthur Scargill. And I doubt, I doubt that he shares many of the convictions of the former miners' leader, except one, that we should obey the democratic will of the people and get Brexit done by October the 31st. My honourable friend is also a, a passionate collector of airline memorabilia. His home is allegedly stocked, a museum of airline wash bags, airline socks and a vast fleet of model planes, including a model Extinction Rebellion protester glued to the roof. And all I can say uh, to my honourable friend is uh, cabin crew doors to automatic and cross check because uh, his career is plainly about to take off and his speech was in the very finest traditions of the House. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, the law and address was brilliantly seconded by my honourable friend, the member for Truro and Falmouth. Yeah who comes, if I can continue with the aeronautical metaphor, from a very different wing of the party. The modern Tory party is a vast and capacious low-carbon plane, by the way, and uh, who has been highly successful as a campaigner for the rights of disabled people. And though she is known for her calm manner and her dulcet tones, when it comes to defending the interests of her native Cornwall or protecting the pasty against the fiscal depredations of former chancellors, she can be as fearsome as any farm of seagull going your chips. And on the most on the most divisive issue in modern Britain, which plagues us to this day, it is well known that she has come down on one side and will not be budged. It is jam first, not cream. She is Mr Speaker, she is Cornish to her roots and her speech also was in the best traditions of the House. Mr Speaker, let me join the Right Honourable Gentleman in paying tribute to the much-loved and greatly missed Paul Flynn, who served his constituents in Newport West for 31 and a half years, a proud and witty Welshman who earned uh, this obituary from Goldie Looking Chain, a South Wales rap ensemble straight out of Newport, is what they said. As an MP, he was well respected since 1987, when first elected. Across the parties, Paul was revered, and it's just possible he was born with that beard. (laughs) Across the floor, far and wide, respected across the political divide, regardless of your own stance, left or right, raise a glass to Paul tonight. Mr Speaker, I have no ideas as to the political preferences of the band members Two Hats or Eggsy, but I think the whole House... 
I, 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 I think the Honourable Lady may be right in what she interjects from a secondary position, but I have no doubt that the whole House will agree with their tribute to Paul Flynn. Yeah. Mr Speaker, the speeches from my honourable friends from North East Derbyshire and Truro and Falmouth were in the finest traditions of the House, and the speech from the Leader of the Opposition was in the finest tradition of the turgiversating Leader of the Opposition. <laughs> First he was opposed to no deal, now he seems to be opposed to any deal. First he was in favour of delivering Brexit, now he wants a second referendum. First he, first he wanted an election. Actually, he wanted an election for quite a long time. Now he'd much rather not. He resembles a Janus, a push-me-pull-you facing both directions at once and yet unable to decide for either. His policy on cake is neither having it nor eating it. And, and, and frankly, I, frankly, I fear for his political health. Because we can all see the Soviet, we can all see the Soviet era expulsions yeah. that are taking place in his circle, as one by one his lieutenants are purged, as Lenin, as Lenin purged the associates of poor old Trotsky. And there is Lenin, Mr. Speaker, the veteran fabricator of GLC budgets, as the as the as the shadow chancellor tightens his icy grip on the Labour Party, the contrast becomes ever stuck. We're putting up wages, contrary to what he just said, we're putting up wages with the biggest expansion of the living wage uh, ever seen. Uh, they would put up taxes, he would put up taxes. We will control immigration with a points based system. He wants to, and of course, and let me anticipate the point that my, my old friend is going to make. And we will look after the interests of the 3.4 million. They, they want to abandon immigration controls altogether, to judge by what he has just said. We back our armed services. He, he, sides, he sides with their enemies historically. He sides with their enemies. And he has said he would like to disband them. We want to strengthen, and we will strengthen, our United Kingdom. He would break it up. And I will give way to the Honourable Gentleman. I'm very grateful to the Prime Minister for giving way. He was just saying there about the, how he's driven them back to the armed services. He'll be aware that our army is you know, 40,000 fewer than it was when the Conservatives came to power. He'll be aware that the people who are serving in armed forces have seen their wages cut in real terms seven years in a row. Tell us what 